In Matthew chapter number 7, we'll read verse number 21. Now everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall... Uh, let me say it again. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Let's pray. Our Father, we sure do thank you for the good singing we've enjoyed. Lord, I'm thankful for God's amazing grace. I'm thankful, Lord, because of your mercy and because of your grace, an old Gentile dog like me could get born again. God, I'm thankful, Lord, that your grace will never run out. I'm thankful you have a vast supply God, I'm thankful, Lord, that you don't look to pronounce judgment on the souls of men. You look to pronounce grace upon the lives of men. God, I pray that this morning you'd certainly put a hedge about us. Lord, we know the wicked one, that sorry no good devil, Lord, would desire nothing more than to steal away the seeds of the Word of God that you desire to plant in the hearts of people. And so, Father, I pray you'd bind him, all the powers of hell. I plead the blood of the Lord Jesus over this place today. And we ask and seek for your presence so real. We ask and seek uh, for the wooing of the Holy Ghost of God. Uh, God, we ask that you'd arrest our attention and God, you deal with our hearts. Uh, God, I pray that folks would not easily dismiss what thus saith the Lord. Uh, but Lord, I pray that it would certainly ring uh, as a bell would ring uh, into their hearts and into their minds. Uh, and I pray that folks would do what the Bible says. Uh, let a man examine himself whether he be in the faith. Uh, and God, I pray that today we would have a hallmark day where folks would deal with God, where believers uh, would be shaken from their complacency, where they'd long to have a burden uh, to live uh, for Christ and a burden uh, for sinners to be saved. Uh, God, I pray today that sinners uh, would be quakened in their soul uh, for fear that eternity uh, will come and they'll find themselves in hell uh, paying for their own sins uh, when they could have their sins paid for by the blood of Christ. Uh, God, I pray sinners under that conviction uh, would come and bow their head and surrender their hearts and repent and trust Christ as Lord and Savior. Father, I pray for unction and power and wisdom. Put a watch guard about my lips Help me not to say anything contrary to the will or word of God. Uh, but God, help me to say everything that you'd have me to say. And God, use this unworthy vessel. God, speak to hearts. Uh, and God, I pray you do an eternal work in our midst today. And Father, we'll bow these unworthy heads one more time. Uh, thank you, Lord, for what great things you have done. Bless now. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' is holy and wonderful and glorious name we pray. Amen and amen. I want to draw your attention as a way of introduction to these verses. I want you to first of all notice the country for the saved. Look what it says in verse 21. The Bible says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, here it is, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. I want to help you with something here this morning. Uh, 
as sure as you're sitting at the Emmanuel Baptist Church, uh, as sure as you're breathing God's air, uh, as sure as your name is what it is, uh, there is a place in glory called heaven. Uh, it's a place that is beyond description. Uh, it is a place that is uh, more beautiful than anything you've seen. Uh, just some glimpses from the Word of God uh, tells us that the streets are purest gold, uh, that the walls are made of jasper, uh, that there are gates of pearl, uh, that there are 12 foundations uh, and each one of them's a mile and a half high. Uh, one of them, brother, fills of rubies. Uh, one of them's of emeralds. Uh, one of them's of sapphires. Uh, one of them's of diamonds. Uh, it's a celestial city. Uh, hey, it's a city that has no need of sun uh, nor moon uh, for the Lamb Himself is the light of the city. Uh, in this country, uh, it's a place where there is no more sin. Uh, no more curse of sin. Uh, there is no more sickness. Uh, there is no more sorrow. Uh, all tears are wiped away from the eyes. Uh, it is a place of beauty and splendor. Uh, and the most beautiful thing is in the center. Uh, it's the throne. And on the throne uh, uh, sits the Godhead. Uh, and it's a place uh, that has been prepared uh, with mansions uh, for every citizen. Uh, and my dear friends, uh, citizenship comes comes at a price. Uh, it's not a price that you and I can pay. Uh, it took God uh, to send His only begotten Son uh, into this world uh, to go to the cross of Calvary uh, and shed His blood for sinners. Uh, that sinners who would bow and accept Him as Lord and Savior. Uh, His blood would wash away their sins uh, and pay their fare to heaven. Uh, it's a place uh, for those who have been redeemed. Uh, there is a country called heaven. Uh, it's called glory. Uh, it's called home to the believer. Uh, there is a country for the saved. Uh, you don't have to worry about politics over there. You don't have to worry about inflation over there. Uh, you don't have to worry about anything over there uh, because it's all wonderful uh, and it's all for the people of God. Uh, there is the country of the saved. I want you to notice those that confess to be saved. Look what it says in verse number 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name or preached in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. <laughs> These people... Uh, did works for the Lord and they called on the Lord's name and they did it in the Lord's name. They confessed to be saved. Can I say there's a lot of people that confess to be Christian. There's a lot of people that hope they're going to heaven. There's a lot of people that are in church today. But being in church, saying you're a Christian, hoping to go to heaven, will not make it so. We see a country for the saved. We see there are those that are confessing that they're saved. And then I want you to notice the condemning of those who think they're saved. Look what it says in verse 23. Now again, verse 21, he says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Mm, said only those that do the will of the Father. What's the will of the Father? It's God's will that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. In verse 22, we find there are those they confess their say. But look at verse 23. He says this, the Lord Jesus, And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Thinking that you're saved, saying that you're saved, hoping that you're saved, uh, uh, doing many works to be saved has nothing to do with being saved. The only thing that makes somebody a believer is somebody that knows the Lord Jesus. It's about a relationship, not religion. Verse 21, verse 22 is about religion. All religion does is bring damnation. Verse 23 is about a relationship. He says, depart from me, I never knew you. Huh? Can I say some of the saddest words in the Bible are depart from me. Hmm. 
Brother Donald, when he is saying, depart from me, he is saying, you are rejected from heaven, you must go to hell. Amen. And then he ends the phrase with this thought. Look what it says. Ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. With God's help, I'm going to preach for just a few minutes this morning on that thought. Ye that work iniquity. What caused Jesus to tell them they can't go to heaven, they must go to hell, is because they were guilty of working iniquity. I got to looking at that word iniquity. What does it mean? Ye that work iniquity. Well, iniquity is defined by four different Hebrew and Greek words. They all mean this. They mean lawlessness. In other words, contrary to the law of God. Can I say you can go to church, but you do it contrary to what God says. You can say you're doing something in Jesus' name, but you can be doing it contrary to what Jesus says to do it. Matter of fact, Paul wrote to the church at Galatians that they believed in another gospel. Can I say uh, you can be baptized. You can do all kinds of things, uh, but friends, you can do it contrary to the way God says to do it. It means lawlessness. Iniquity means lack of righteousness. Can I help you with something? The Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. The Bible says all of our righteousness is as filthy rags. Uh, and that's far worse than just an old shop rag. Uh, 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 those filthy rags it's talking about are minstrel rags. Uh, and the, that's the best that we have to offer God. It's not about our righteousness, Brother Phil. But I thanks, thanks be unto God. When you get saved by the grace of God, uh, when you get washed in the blood of Jesus, uh, when you're justified by faith, uh, you get robed in His righteousness. Uh, when God looks at me, He don't see me. Uh, he sees Himself. Uh, and my dear friends, uh, if you're not robed in His righteousness, uh, you are full of iniquity, my dear friends. Because you lack righteousness. Can I say this? Iniquity also means doing things wrong. I'm reminded over there when David had a burden to bring the ark of Israel back to uh, uh, Jerusalem, put it in the temple of God, and he made a cart, uh, and it was pulled by oxen, uh, and he put the ark on the cart, uh, and uh, uh, when it started, uh, 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 the ark shifted, and a man put his hand to it, and he died instantly, and David was wroth. But see, David was doing a right thing, but in a wrong way. The ark was to be born of staves and carried on a shoulder, not on a cart. Can I say there are a lot of folks thinking they're doing something right today. They're in churches. Uh, they're listening to preaching. Uh, 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 they listen to a uh, podcast and they uh, uh, fill their and saturate their minds with things they think are Christian. They're doing right things, but in a wrong way. It's just iniquity. Can I say? It means unjust. The only one that can justify us is Christ and we're justified by our faith in Christ. It means, my dear friends, worthless. Reprobate silver, does God call it. Anything that you do that uh, uh, is not done in the right way to glorify Jesus Christ, my dear friends, is worthless. It will merit you nothing. Iniquity is truly unequal dealings with God. Can I say what the effects of iniquity are? Iniquity is formed whenever we turn away from what God has said or determined. Every time you leave a church service and you haven't done what God said to do in that service, iniquity starts forming in your life. Every time you read the Bible and you don't do what it says, iniquity starts forming in your life. Uh, 
The Bible says for him to know to do what uh, do good and doeth it not to him it is sin. Every time the Spirit of God deals with you and you don't do it, iniquity starts forming in your life. And here's what happens. After iniquity starts forming, it grows, and then it's perceived as integrity. Well, my integrity tells me to do this. That's a big problem. Because your integrity is telling you to do what's opposite of what God says. Well, when it's not dealt with, iniquity grows into integrity then integrity turns into sensuality. Can I say, most false religions and false churches and most false ideologies are all geared to satisfying the flesh. The reason churches now have rock bands in them rather than old time uh, 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 singing and worship like we've heard this morning is because it satisfies the flesh to hear some Jimi Hendrix. Hmm? Hear some wide open guitars screaming and screaming. We like that stuff. Uh, we like Doobie Brothers. Jesus is all right with me. Can I say, just up the street, they used to have rock band. They'd open their service with the, uh, the Bee Gees staying alive. Uh, there's nothing spiritual about any of that stuff. It's just fleshly and sensual because they turned away from the truth and let iniquity abound in their life. Iniquity gives you integrity. You start making decisions for yourself, and then it's based on what's sensual in your life. What feels good. Do you know the doctrine of the devil is simply this? If it feels good, do it. Amen. Can I say then that sensuality then becomes your spirituality? Yep. Why do you think the Bible says try the spirits whether they are of God? How do we try them? With the Word of God. And if anything uh, uh, does not line up with the Word of God, it's not the Holy Spirit of God doing it. Can I say you can go into all kinds of churches, you can go to all kinds of assembly, you can hear all kinds of stuff today that has a spirit. But that don't mean it's the Holy Spirit. Amen. When you have iniquity in your life, you have a hard time discerning which one's right. Yeah. Because you'll follow after what's sensual every time. Amen. Can I say, after spirituality, then ultimately iniquity becomes the grip of the devil. You know why it's harder for somebody that's in their 60s and 70s and 80s to get born again than it is a little child? Because they've had so much iniquity built up in their life and the devil has such a grip on their life that they will not yield to the Spirit of God. Amen. Ye that work iniquity. Can I say some things about workers of iniquity this morning? Can I say, first of all, workers of iniquity are many. Look what it says in verse 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord. Many. Matter of fact, Jesus said, when the Son of Man returned, will he find faith on the earth? He said, many are called, but few are chosen. Hmm? Because many work iniquity. Now, we've got a good number here this morning. And if I ask you if you're saved, a lot of you raise your hand. I wonder how many are really saved. Hmm. I wonder in these mega churches that they pack out with tens of thousands, how many are really born again? <laughs> Brother Ray, you remember that one time we went down to the, that singing down at Rupp and the place was packed uh, and there was all kinds of showmanship of singing going on and you looked at me and said, I wonder what would happen if we turned a preacher loose in here. Huh? Yeah, that's good. There's a lot of people that says they're saved. There's a lot of people that act like they're saved. There's a lot of people that think that they're saved. Uh, but I'm telling you, the Bible says that many are workers of iniquity. Can I say this morning, Amen. not only are workers of iniquity many, can I say workers of iniquity believe in being merit-based? Look again at verse 22. Many will say to me in that name, or in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? 
and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. There are many who are going to die and go to hell who were workers of iniquity, who did things in the name of Jesus, who thought that that was what it was going to take to get them to heaven. It's not by works of righteousness which we've done. It's by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, Lord, a friend, that's going to get us there. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, uh, not of works, uh, less, uh, not unless you should boast. It's not about what you and I do. It's about what he did. Yes, sir. Amen. Can I say there are some whose hopes in their works? Well, I went to church. I did this, and I did this, and I did this, and I did this. Friend, it's not about what you do. It's about what he did what he did for you uh, all I can say about me I am what I am by the grace of God huh preacher I prayed preacher I read the Bible through preacher I did this and I did this but have you been born again one of the most religious men in the Bible, Nicodemus, came to Jesus by night. said, we know. He called him rabbi. He called the Lord rabbi. He said, we know you're of God because the works you do. Uh, no man can do those things. Uh, he said, we know. And Jesus said, you must be born again. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So what must I do to inherit eternal life? You must be born again. Yeah. That's right. You've got to be born again. Can I say... Born again people don't have to live like they're saved. Born again people are saved. And it affects the way they live. Hmm. Can I say those that uh, hope in merit-based salvation, their hopes in their work, their hopes in their welfare, how much money they've given to charity, how much money they've given to the church, well, how much they gave to this, and how much they gave to that, and how much they gave to this. And if you're trusting in what you did and what you gave to get you to heaven, you're in bad shape. That's right. You're going to hear, depart from me. Yes, sir. Uh, Brother Doug, when folks give unto the Lord, they don't care that anybody knows how much they gave. But when folks are workers of iniquity, Brother Bob, they want to make sure everybody knows how much they gave. And all of us got a long way to go to catch up with that widow. She gave two mites. And that was about a quarter of a cent each, so she gave about a half a penny. But that's all she had. And Jesus said she gave more than everybody else. Hmm. Uh, oh, you're based on what you've given, what you've done. God surely will let you into heaven because you've been, you've been a good person. And Jesus said, you're workers of iniquity. Uh, he's, he's saying that to people who preached. He's saying that to people who, who cast demons out of people. He's saying that to people who do many wonderful works. Oh, people look around and say, you must be going to heaven. Look at all you've done. But Jesus looks at your heart. That's right. Amen. It's not based on your works or your welfare. So many are trusting in the water. I've been baptized. If you're not born again, all that makes you is a wet sinner. Yes, sir. Yep. Baptism merits you nothing in the eyes of God. Baptism merits you a, a testimony in the eyes of men. You have joined the Lord's local church. You're showing to the world what's already taken place in your heart. But if nothing's taken place in your heart, it's all pointless and useless. Amen. And he'll say, depart from me, ye that worked iniquity. You must be born again. Workers of iniquity are many. Workers of iniquity believe in a merit-based salvation. Workers of iniquity have a moral compass. People think because I haven't done my neighbor wrong, because I haven't murdered anybody, because I never voted for a Democrat. Say amen right there. 
because I never did this and I never did this and because I always do this and I always do that and because I never ran a red light and because I never got a speeding ticket because I've always done this and I've always been a good person again there's none that doeth good no not one when Nicodemus called the Lord good he said why are you calling me good there's none good but God Paul said in this flesh dwelleth no good thing your moral compass will send you to hell friend Jesus don't want you to die and go to hell this church don't want you to die and go to hell this preacher don't want you to die and go to hell that's why I'm preaching this way this morning can I say this about workers of iniquity they have misguided precepts they have listened to just enough truth to taint the whole truth have you ever heard anybody that talks out both sides of their mouth they make it sound so good and there's some that have been hoodwinked just like Eve in the garden and they've listened to just enough that they develop their own theology and they have misguided precepts hmm some of you believe you're saved based on your feelings. Well, I had an experience and I felt good about it. Listen to me, I'm not saved on my feelings. But the night I got saved, I felt pretty good. When I get around the house of God, sometimes I don't feel good when I come in, but boy, the choir gets to singing, Brother Phil gets to shouting, somebody gets to testifying. All of a sudden, my flesh didn't feel good, but what's inside starts bubbling over, feels real good. But I'm not saved based on how I feel because my feelings change. That's why that whole crowd that believes you can lose your salvation, everything they got is based on emotion. Hmm. My salvation is based upon the Lord Jesus Christ and His Word. Amen. And His Word changeth not. Amen. Some of you, because you felt good in a service, boy, there was a service, there was a revival meeting, and boy, it was a good spirit in the house of God, and you came forward, and you're trusting because you felt good coming forward that you're saved. But while you, was, while you came forward, you, you didn't pray anything or do anything that changed your life. You see, if you're in Christ, you're a new creature. Former things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. When you get born again, your life changes from the inside out. God doesn't save anybody and leaves them where He saves them. Uh, he saves them and begins changing them uh, and puts them on a holy path called a, a glorious uh, road, a holy highway, uh, and you start uh, walking towards Christ. And the closer you get to Him, the more you start looking like Him. Hmm? Now sometimes on this holy highway you might stumble and fall but I'm glad he don't leave you there. He'll pick you up, put you back on the highway, clean you off, and keeps you headed toward heaven. But you're not saved on an emotional experience. There are some, their misguided precepts is based on their friends. Not an emotional experience, but another's experience. I've seen a brother Doug, and I know you have too, during a revival meeting, somebody will come forward, and, and a group of friends will come forward popping bubble gum because one said they got saved, they all said they got saved. No change in their life. If you're here today basing your salvation on somebody else and what God did for them, I'd do some checking up. Because Jesus is a personal Savior. He comes to you personally, deals with you about your sin personally, and friend, He saves you personally. Huh? Night I got saved, I didn't get saved because other people got saved. I got saved because Jesus was dealing with me. And I was tired of being a sinner, and that night I got born again. Mm. He'll save you personally. Hmm, folks basing their experience on what God did for somebody else you better look inwardly and see what God did for you let me just say this Miss Jackie God saves you you're still in your flesh don't mean you're perfect but there's something in you that desires to be holy and when you sin it bothers you 
If you're born again, you don't go running to the same places you ran to before you got born again. You don't go to the honky-tonks anymore. You don't go to the clubs anymore. You don't act that way anymore because something's different about you. You know where you go? You go to the house of God. Amen. When you leave the house of God, you take what you've heard and you start applying it to your life. You don't have a filthy mouth anymore, Brother Brian. You don't go out there and tell lies and fornicate and do a bunch of wicked things anymore. Why? Because He changed you, huh? God saves you. He changes you. A lot of people got a lying tongue. You're not saved. Hmm. That don't mean you won't tell a lie after you got saved, but you feel guilty about it and you get it made right. Some of you got a lot of fleshly problems. You still live in the world. Oh, you come to church on Sunday and sing, Oh, how I love Jesus. On Monday, you're living like the devil. You're not saved. Huh? God doesn't let his, 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 love, uh, his beloved stay in the hog pen. Amen. He gets you out of the hog pen. Yeah, right. hmm. You know what wallers in mud all the time? Hogs. Yeah. Amen, you know what butts at the things of God? Goats. You know what follows God? Sheep. Yeah. The Bible talks about a dog don't return to its vomit. We're just old Gentile dogs, but if he saves you, you don't want that old lifestyle. You don't act that way anymore. And if you do mess up, you get it made right. right. Some have misguided precepts, think they can live however they want to and still go to heaven. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says, be holy for I'm holy. Sure. They base everything on their feelings and emotional experience or on their friends and others' experience or on fear. A threatened experience. I've been in some meetings where the, the preacher literally tries to put the fear of God in you. It makes you afraid. And you come forward and say a prayer because you're afraid. My dear friends, when you see that you're lost, it should make you horribly afraid. But I didn't get saved because somebody made me afraid. I got saved because the Holy Ghost dealt with me. And He put terror in my soul. Mm. Some of you feel, felt threatened. I've been in church where they make everybody by the head and they make everybody come to the altar whether you need it or not. Where's God in that? Uh, I've seen them drag folks down the altar. Where's God in that? I've seen preachers call people out by name and point their finger at them and say, you need to get born again today. Where's God in that? If the Holy Ghost of God can't get your attention, nothing I can say is going to help you. Some have misguided precepts. Can I say this? I'm about done. Workers of iniquity have a malign conceit. They got a lot of pride. You know what that crowd was saying there when they said, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not cast out devils? Have we not done many wonderful works? You know what they're telling the Lord? They're telling the Lord, Lord, we know more than you. We're good enough. And you know what sends people to hell, Brother Phil? Their pride. Amen, I'll never forget when Brother Thad got saved. He was having a revival meeting. He got under conviction. He told me he made a profession because he knew he'd never get to date Miss Tammy unless he, he made a profession. Somebody took him in a room and told him a bunch of stuff, and he said all that. And, but he never got under conviction until that revival meeting. He said until he'd come... Heard some of our preaching, got in that revival meeting, and I'll never forget what he said. He said, Brother Doug, what will they think, me being a treasure of the church? I said, Thad, we sure would like to have a saved treasure more than a lost treasure. Thanks be unto God, he didn't let his pride drag him off to hell. There are other people in here that were lost church members. They didn't let their pride take them to hell. Yeah, amen. Brother Bob was a lost church member, I believe, for 16 years. But God got a hold of his heart. He knew he's lost, but he didn't let that pride drag him off to hell. He got right. Amen. Christian, preacher's boy, been through the motions, didn't let pride send him to hell. A couple years ago, got born again. 
Uh, I'd rather have a born again deputy sheriff and a born again son than a lost one. Full of pride, dying and going to hell. Many are going to say, here, depart from me because they wouldn't let their pride be put under submission and come trust the Lord. They let pride drag them off the hill. Friend, I don't care who it is. I don't care what it is. It's not worth going to hell for. Can I say this? Workers of, of, of iniquity have a mechanical spirituality. They're not genuine. They're not real. They know how to shake your hand. They know how to smile. They know how to go through the motions. They know how to put an offering in the plate. They know how to come to church. It's all mechanical. Uh, they come to church. Real Christians have church. There's a difference. There's a real difference between those that are genuine, those that are real. Hmm. Those that are real don't need incentives. Those that are real, they just want to hang out where God is. Amen. Let me say this lastly. Those that work iniquity have a miserable future. Amen. Brother Bob, they sit in church and they try to act saved. Inside, something's not right. Something's empty. They don't understand why Brother James will stand up and holler. And they don't understand why Brother Phil... Nobody understands Brother Phil. <laughs> they don't understand why some people are so excited and why some people are so happy. They don't understand why Brother Ray just sings them songs about heaven and just glows while he sings them. They don't understand all that. They just come. And they go through the motions. And they're empty. And they think that everything's okay because they're coming to church. No change in their life, no joy in their life, no hope in their life, no peace in their life, no true relationship with God. Oh, they pray, but their words are idle. They do things to get attention and get noticed. And they do all of that, Brother Donald, and they let pride bring them to the judgment seat. And they're going to hear, depart from me, ye that worked iniquity. I never knew you. They have a miserable future. They're miserable right now. That's nothing compared to dying and going to hell. In hell, the fire is not quenched, and the worm dieth not. Hell was designed to inflict punishment on supernatural beings. But those who reject the Lord Jesus Christ, there's no other place for them to go. It's heaven or hell. An eternity. So they must die and go to hell. Very people that they would never ever let in their home they're going to spend eternity with. Some of the most sorry of the sorriest they're going to be there in agony and misery, galled by pain, longing for the torment and the torture to end, and it never ends, friend. And all your future has to hold is misery, misery, misery because you worked iniquity instead of letting God work righteousness in your heart and life. Now, listen to me if you've never heard, not heard anything else I've said today. Listen to this. Jesus loves you. Amen. Jesus is for you. Jesus has never sent anybody to hell. It is your sin that will send you to hell if you do not trust in the Lord Jesus. Jesus died for you. Jesus bled. He shed his blood for you. Jesus was buried and rose again for you. Jesus uh, sent his gospel and his church forth uh, and has protected his word and his church for 2,000 years and allowed this church to be here, allowed you to be here today to hear that you're working iniquity because he loves you and he doesn't want you to die and go to hell. Whether you die and go to hell is up to you. The work's been done. But Jesus loves you. I wonder today, are you willing to love him back? That's all salvation is. Where you turn from this world and just fall in love with Jesus and ask him to forgive you. Are you willing to swallow your pride 
and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you tired of coming to church and there being no change? Are you tired of not having any joy, not having any hope? Are you tired of reading the Bible and it never makes sense? Are you tired of praying and you know that it's not having any impact on anything? Are you tired of coming to church and seeing others rejoice and you not ever rejoice? Are you tired of just going through the motions? i got good news. Today's your day. Why don't you come and put your faith in the Lord? He loves you. Oh, I'd have loved to preach on heaven this morning, but the Lord says there's those that work iniquity. Are you tired of putting on the facade? Are you tired of all the cover-ups and all the lies and everything you got to tell to just keep going through the motions? Are you tired of all that mess? Are you tired of your life being a mess? I got good news. Jesus loves you. He'll change your life. But you got to be willing to turn from your pride and your wicked ways and turn to Him. If you'll come to Him today, He'll save you. Change your life. Let's all stand, Brother Ray, get a song of invitation. Are they getting a song? Let's pray. Father, we love you. We're thankful you first loved us. Lord, I've tried to the best of my ability to be obedient to you today. God, I fear a crowd this size, that word many rings in my heart. Many that may not know you. Many that work iniquity. Many that are living, living false lives. They try to live a Christian life and they can't do it because they're not Christian. So God, I pray now. Oh God, I pray the sweet Holy Ghost of God would convict of sin and draw sinners to Jesus. Help them to see how much you love them. Help them to see that you died for them. Help them to see that you'll save them and change their life. Help them to see the error of their ways and their life is nothing but iniquity. Help them to come and trust in Jesus. Lord, I pray for Christians to get broken. Oh, get broken for revival. Because there are many around us who are living lives full of iniquity. God, save the workers of iniquity in here this morning. And give glory to your name. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.